decided that it meant a great deal to us because the first time you get married, I mean, you're hopeful, you think that this is the right person, and I hope that you love each other, but you really don't know what the future holds. Ten years later, if you're willing to stand up there and say, I have been with this person ten years, I really love them, it's been ten years of thick and thin, or thick and thin, or oh. thin and thin, and I still want to spend the rest of my life with them, I think it's infinitely more meaningful. And it's my surprise to him, because he did know about that. I got the couple who stood up for us originally to fly in. So when he walked into the courthouse, my mother and dad and this couple, the four people that had been there originally, and I tell you, the two of us, well, the six of us, cried through that ceremony. And the judge was wonderful, you know, because he just talks to you. I mean, the first time we got married, Tommy, of course, had been married before, so he figured he'd just hum along because he knew the ceremony so well. (laughs) But the judge kept saying things like, you should like each other and talk to each other. And he was doing shtick, and I finally said, Tommy, this is the ceremony. He said, you're kidding. And then paled, you know, was terrified. Yeah. But the second time, I mean, a reaffirmation of the vows after 10 years, it was just so lovely. And I, I would suggest to anybody who still feels that you love the person you're with five years, 10 years later, do it. It's wonderful. I think that's very sweet, and I, I, I will do that. And we then spent, as you know, <laughs> I want to be there. No, one of these times I'm going to do that. It's this just... time you're going to do it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We we then had dinner with ten people who had been with us ten years or more. Oh, and, of course, you were there. That was very nice. It was a nice evening. Thank you. Did you wear white? Did you wear the white? Well, I was afraid God would strike me dead. I see. I, see. I wore off-white. <laughs> the first time, when I married Tommy, the first time I wore gray and white. <laughs> you know, and they were taking bets in the hall that it would never last. But that was a mini skirt, and you know that my parts oh. are in different places now. I was afraid to put it on again. Did you? <laughs> I, I don't want to be... You uh, remember my cute little knees. I, you have They're my knees. cute little ankles now. I did. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to ask a personal question like this, but uh, why not? I mean... Oh, dear I, God. I, I, I just want to know, did you, did you have a honeymoon night? I mean... We had a wonderful uh, honeymoon night. The wonderful thing about being married 10 years is you can go home and go to sleep. <laughs> You're not under any pressure because you always know this tomorrow. Yeah. Sometimes I think that's wrong when couples get married. By the time they have the wedding and the reception and everything, and the whole, it, it doesn't seem to work quite well. I, I really do feel terribly sorry for kids who have big weddings. And I'm talking about kids, you know, yeah. big weddings and that terrible pressure All day of long. the first night. I mean, when you do believe that you're going to be together for a long, long time, there's something very sweet about just cuddling up and going to sleep and not yeah. having to prove anything. Yeah. We'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> say I was going to say you have a new addition people would say you're going to have a baby or something but it's not true so no. I don't want to mislead them it's a four-legged person and got... since I share my life with you I have brought my daughter the dog here now is the dog uh, trained I mean oh all this is an imp- impeccably behaved person all right because I wouldn't... Is, we have brand new carpet here uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen my daughter the dog excuse right. me one minute she really you know it's like this like it's when you people oh. Oh. Come on. That's a, that's a cute dog. That's all she does is good. This is Jaws. 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 <laughs> ah, easy, easy. Uh, yes, how she are you? She never obeyed a command. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Affectionate dog. Come on. Stay on. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh. Yes. I just have, now have worms. <laughs> what kind of a dog is this? This bet and tail. Uh, and that's as big as they get? Uh, she'll be about another eight pounds. Isn't she love? Can you see the Beautiful. face? Yeah. Oh, that's a pretty dog. That Gorgeous. is sweet, baby. Yeah. A Tibetan... She's six months old, and she now weighs 15 pounds, and she, she gets lessons, you know, the teacher, the tender Obedience teacher lessons. comes. She said, this is the most stubborn dog that has ever <laughs> lived. <laughs> she thinks I'm a chew stick. For the longest time, she thought that her name was No. <laughs> <laughs> dog, yes. dogs, really, dogs really need discipline yeah. to be happy. You know, some people think the dogs, if they just run loose and are crazy, are happy, but they don't. They really need it, the discipline. We're, we're waiting for her nose to turn black. I think there's part rabbit in here. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a pretty dog. But, you know, when she was teething, Tommy's oh. hands are just a mess. And it's the, uh, the flying Walenda, you know. Never, the four feet are never on the ground. You call her thing. Jaws? Well, we call her Jaws until she stops teasing. Her name is Gypsy. Gypsy. Hello, Gypsy Tyson. Hello, song. Gypsy. Speak. Oh, you Why do you always say that to a dog? A dog doesn't know what you're talking about. I you see, I'm doing speak. what you should not do. You shouldn't say speak she, to a dog. She does do that, but she may not stop. 
Gypsy? I think she's too distracted. Gypsy? Speak. Can you speak? <laughs> Thank you. All right, lick Can it. you speak? <laughs> hmm? Can you speak? No. I... Very affectionate. Yes, Very affectionate a, dog. She's a wonderful dog, and they're a new breed to America. They're the good luck symbols in Tibet. If you save somebody's life or you're going on a, yeah. on a, a very dangerous journey, this is uh, uh, the dog that they give you. It's the greatest gift that you can receive. Now, this Look Tibetan, at the feet. Tibetan Terrier. Tibetan Terrier. Yeah. And she came. There are only about 10 breeders, I think, in America. We had to go to Novato. Yeah. To the Taisong Kennel. It was very, very oh, hard to find one. She's very beautiful. I saw a, a picture in a, in a dog yeah. magazine, you know. Yeah. And I... Uh, <laughs> oh, you hussy. See, I don't know Look why... The why would a, uh, let somebody, somebody lick their face? You don't know what dogs have been doing. They have very clean mouths. I, mean, I know what she's been doing. <laughs> she's only six months old. Thank you, sweetie. But you know, dogs... Are, uh, and people just put their face up and let the dog lick them, and the dog's been right out there... <laughs> let me tell you something. Taking a little doggy bath, uh, you know. Yes, yes. See, this is what I mean about Jaws. Yeah. This is the chew stick. Mm. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back, and uh, Donna Summer will join us. Thank you.